2 Chronicles. We're in the Old Testament this morning. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. If you'll stand, please, for the reading of the word, we'd appreciate it. Just honoring God. If you cannot, we understand. Have a seat. Relax. 2 Chronicles chapter 7. We're going to begin with verse 11. I'll give everyone a minute to get there. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11. I'm going to read through verse 16. If you have it, say amen. amen. If you're still looking, say I'm still looking. Good. Oh, wow, y'all are getting good. All right. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 11 says, And, and thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house. And all that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house, he prospered, prosperously, prosperously affected. <clears throat> and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place, say this place, to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, verse 14, everybody knows this one. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now verse 15. Now my eyes shall be open and my, my mine ears attent unto the prayer that is made in what? This place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Let's pray. Father, we come before you this morning and Lord, we want to thank you in advance for preparing our hearts to receive. Lord Jesus, that, that our hearts would be fertile ground to receive a word from you. Give us ears to hear, uh, eyes to see, a heart to receive, Father God. Remove every distraction, every block, every wall, Father. Every spirit that is not of you, we take authority right now in the name of Jesus. Bind and cast it out of this place, Father. Let there be no distraction, Lord God, from your word. Father, be glorified, be exalted. Thank you, God, for what you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. Thank you for standing. This morning I'm going to be preaching a message that the Lord gave me on Wednesday night as I was praying. He sent me to this scripture and to Psalm 51. And um, we'll get to that in a minute. But the, the message I will be preaching is a house of sacrifice. A house of sacrifice. Now I want you to go up to verse 5 in the same chapter. I don't want to read something. It says, And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 20 and 2,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the, so the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. So I wanted to point that out. I wanted you to see how big this sacrifice was. King Solomon comes and they finally finish the building of the temple. It took seven years to build this temple. And he comes and he's dedicating it unto the Lord. And he sacrifices 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. Now that's, that's huge, amen? Amen. And, and, and just by this reading alone, if you back up and you read the, the chapters before it, and even with this scripture here, you might think that when the Lord says a house of sacrifice, you might, might think he means like, like, you know, the oxen and the sheep and things like that, right? Because there was so much sacrifice, it seems to be like, this must be what the Lord's talking about. Look at all this sacrifice. This is why he said, I have chosen this place, a house of sacrifice. But, but I want you to open up your mind this morning, because we're going to go a little bit deeper than just physical 
animal sacrifice gifts and talents that you bring to an altar. See, Solomon had finished this house, the house of the Lord. It's funny, it, it call, they call it the house of the Lord, and another word for it is the temple of God. Amen? How, where's the temple of God this morning? Come on, church. Know ye not that you are the temple of God. I want you to keep that in your spirit as we speak about the house of God this morning and the house of sacrifice because I believe that the Lord gave me a word for everyone that's here. And, and, and he's calling us to something specific. So let's go a little bit deeper. After this dedication ceremony, it brings us to, to verse 11. And I want, I want to begin to break down this scripture for you. In verse 11, it says, And the word, thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house, and all that came unto Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and his own house, he prosperously effected. So I want you to think about this for a second. He's building the house of God and his own. And it says specifically that all that was in his heart, he prospered in it. Everything that he wanted to do for God, everything that every goal that he had, everything that he was trying to accomplish, it says that he prospered in it. And not only in the house of God, but also in his own house. So uh, don't, don't miss that because David wanted to build the house of God and God didn't let him. He says, you know what? You can't, your hands are too bloody, but, but why don't you build up and get, gather all the material and give it to your son Solomon and he's going to build my house. But with Solomon's blessing of building his house also came a blessing of building his own house. How many know when you build the house of the Lord, like, and I'm talking about literally and physically. So when you build the house of God, you build the, your own house. In the same sentence, when you build the house of God, you build your own house. So a lot of us are like, you know, you, you want to build and you want to you want to uh, give and you want to support ministries and that's that's well and good and, and you should. And so when you, when you sacrifice, and I'm, I'm, I can attest to this, when you sacrifice and you give to the kingdom, God blesses you back. You can't outgive God. Now, but at that same time, when you, when you build the house of God, and this is what I'm saying, I want you to understand that you are building a house this morning. You're building it from the foundation all the way up through the pillars, through the strong points, even if you have weak places in the building. You are building a house this morning. And I, I want you to grab a hold of this because so many, so many people, that they know that this is the temple of God, but, but they fail to realize there's still some building that needs to be done. There's still some construction. How many are under construction a little bit? <laughs> Amen. I know I am. You know, there's all kinds of orange cones and tape around my construction. You know, and the Lord is calling us to realize, because some people will, will say, uh, you know, I'm the temple of God, and they think it's, the temple's good the way it is. It might be a little dirty. Your temple might be great, but need, need a little dusting, need a little sweeping, right? Maybe a blowtorch, I don't know. But there, there's a house where the Lord resides. And that's the house that God is calling us to build this morning. And he's, uh, thank you, Father. This morning I'm preaching on a house of sacrifice. And, and you understand why I'm getting emotional right now because to be broken, to allow yourself to be broken takes sacrifice. To allow yourself to be vulnerable, it takes sacrifice. To put all pride aside, it takes a sacrifice. And, and before I get to the end of my message, I, God is, is building a house and, and, and Solomon is building this house of God and he's building his own and, and all that was within his heart prospered. And so my first question to you this morning when it comes to the house, what's in your heart? 
Because everything that was in Solomon's heart, he prospered in it. Everything that he wanted to do for God. And, and there's been no temple like Solomon's temple. He built the be most beautiful uh, bricks laid with gold. And every, it was just beautiful. And he put everything he could into it. Everything, it says, the scripture says, all that was in his heart. He prospered. He was able to accomplish it. So my question to you this morning is, what is in your heart? When it comes to the house of God and the house of God, what's in your heart this morning? And sometimes when we look in our heart, we're going to see, ooh, it's, uh, the heart is desperate, desperately wicked. Who can know it, right? And sometimes we'll look in there and we'll see, Lord, I, I, need, I need some extra overtime construction workers on my heart. You know, they, they need to put some overtime and some jackhammering and stuff like that because I need some help. How many need some help? I know I need some help. But see, the thing about it is, church, is, is, is what's in your heart. In Solomon's heart, he had a heart to build the house of God. He had a heart to build his house. And, and in the scriptures, as in turn, the king's palace was also built. It was also built. Is your heart God first? It takes a sacrifice. And the reason why I ask that, church, because there's a lot of people that, that, that say God's first. That God's, as far as when you list your priorities, how many will list them and say, God? And then, I don't know, you, your list might be different. You know, God, family, you know, or God, work, you know, I don't know how you, how you function, you know. There, there's some people that go, God, my babies. Then my husband, my wife, you know, you know. Anyway, you got to pray on that one. But how many have priorities and you say that God's on the throne? You say that God's in the number one slot, right? But, but when it comes to building the house of God, and I want you to think of not only the house, but this house. When it comes to building your house, is God really first? Are you really building Right. If, 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 how, how long have you been under construction and how long have you been working on the same part of the house? Because if... Let me, let, me, let, me, let me see if I can get this into the personal realm. How many have a house that there's been something broken in for a while? And, <laughs> and you, you're like, um, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get there. Is All the husbands, I'll get there, you know. They got that honey-do list, and that honey-do list ain't changed in forever, right? Well, I threw the trash today. Yeah, but we can't turn on the light over here. Oh, no. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. And sometimes in the spirit, there, there's some places in our house that have been on construction over and over and over in the same area, and you look over there, you're like, let's just hide that. You know, put a plant in front of it or it, it could take like one, a paint and no, we, we like, let's put a frame over it. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Just, no? Okay. <laughs> I, I'm on topic, but I'm not on topic. I'm just going to tell you right now. But it was in Solomon's heart. Everything was in Solomon's heart was to do and to make and to build up the house of God with excellence. Perfectly. Is that your heart this morning? Is that what's in your heart is to build this house perfectly? To build this house perfectly. Do you, do you give everything, all that's in your heart to build God's house first? Amen. See, so that's why this, the Lord, when, when you read it, and, and, I, and I tried to accentuate it when he says, this will be a house of sacrifice. That house, a house of sacrifice. How many know that when you put God first, you can't help but being blessed? Amen. Nobody experienced that yet? couple of y'all. 
I'm going to tell you, church, that there's... I know that it's a catchy and a religious phrase, but I, I'm telling you, you cannot outgive God. And here's what I mean by that. And I'm not talking about money this morning. God can convict you about money. Maybe that's your problem. And you need to give or whatever, sacrifice. But what I'm talking about this morning is giving of yourself. Giving more of you. Giving with all your heart, giving completely over to what the Lord wants, trying to make sure I'm looking and uh, what else can I do to my house? How else can I make my, the Lord's house better? How else can I build the Lord's house? How else can I fortify on this area? And if a robber tries to come in, is my, is my door secure? Is my lock secure? Are my windows secure? What else can I do to make sure that the house of God is what it needs to be? Amen. And that's what I'm asking this morning. That's what I believe the Lord is challenging you to look in the mirror and say, well, your house, his house, are you building it? Or have you stopped construction and said, I'm good where I'm at. I'm good with what he's done. I'm good. I know that there's flaws and I know that there's blemishes, but I'm good. And this is the Lord's challenge this morning. Go to verse 12. And it said right here, it says right here, I want you to understand this. Uh, and it will get deeper into what I mean by a sacrifice. God bless you. Verse 12 says, And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night, and he said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. So I want to stop right there for a second. What prayer? If you back up in the chapter before that, to chapter 6, Solomon begins to pray uh, 2 Chronicles 6, 9, uh, 12. Yeah, 12 through 41, through the end of the chapter, is Solomon's prayer. And I'm, I'm not going to read it all to you this morning because I've got a lot more scripture to go on. But I want to summarize it for you. King Solomon says in this prayer, says, Lord, you've kept your covenant with my father, King David. And you've allowed me to build your temple. Now that your temple is built, and here's what he starts to say. He says, if, if the people sin against their neighbor if the people sin against you if you shut up the heavens and there's no rain if if there's a drought drought if there's a pestilence and and something's devouring the harvest get grasshoppers and locusts and if there's a famine if their enemies besiege and surround your people if they're at war if their sin, I want y'all to hear this one. If their sin causes them to fall into captivity and they're carried far away. Or even if a stranger comes that doesn't know you but just knows your name. And here's his prayer. If they, if they will, if, they, if, if they've done all these things. But they humbly return. And they humbly turn from them, their sins. And confess thy name. And pray. Will you hear from them? Will you hear their voice? And will you forgive them? That's Solomon's prayer for this temple. He said, I know that, I know that you're a covenant-keeping God, so I want to make a divine covenant with you now. And this, this, this portion of Scripture that I'm reading, re reading to you is titled the divine covenant. Because so the Lord made a covenant with his, his father, King David, and now Solomon's trying to make a covenant with him. He says, if the people do all these things... And they mess up. I'm going to go over them again. If the people sin against their neighbor, if they sin against you, Father, or, or if for some reason when they sin, you decide to shut up the heavens and there's no rain and there's a famine, there's a drought, there's a pestilence, something starts to devour their harvest. If their enemies surround them, Father, besiege them. If they're at war with their enemies, and if their sin causes them to fall into captivity and be pulled far away. Or strangers come, will you please hear them? Make this covenant with me. I built this. Make this covenant with me. Will you hear them and will you forgive them? And so it brings us back to verse 12 where he says, And the Lord appeared unto Solomon by night and he said, I have heard thy prayer and I have chosen this place to myself a house of sacrifice. And that's when he says, if I shut up the heavens, he's responding. Or if there is no rain, or if I command locusts to devour the land, or I send a pestilence among my people, here's the answer. 
Here's my covenant with them. If my people, which are called by my name, how many are called by his name, right, shall humble themselves. This is the house of sacrifice. This is where it begins, church. I know that when you hear sacrifice, you think of something different. But the first thing that you need to do when you're going to live and make a house of sacrifice is humble yourself. Because he said, if my people which are called by my, my name shall humble themselves. Humble themselves and pray. The Lord said, I heard your prayer. And I have chosen this place, a house of sacrifice. And if I allow all these things to happen, here's what your people need to do. But I want to point out that at the end of that, when he says in verse 12, I have chosen this place myself for a house of sacrifice. And then he lists the things that might happen to him. Then he goes on to define the kind of sacrifice. Okay, so I want you to see that. You, you, right above that you saw 22,000 oxen sacrifice and 120,000 sheep sacrifice. And that's a type of sacrifice. But God is about to define the house of sacrifice and what he means by this house of sacrifice. Because he says, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves, sacrifice. Humble, them, humble yourself speaks, it speaks of humility. It takes humility, right? To sac- it takes, it's a sacrifice to walk humble. Amen? It, n- nobody, nobody has a problem with pride. I, you know, it takes sacrifice. It takes, let me put it to you this way. It takes sacrifice to put other people first. It takes, uh, it takes sacrifice to put, to put yourself last. You know what? Go ahead. Yeah, no. How many, when, when, when the food's served, you're first in line? Me. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> Just being real with you. Especially when sister and I had a cooks. Boom, I'm in line. I'll be, the whole family's like, Like you live here. My bad. But it takes humility to choose to put others first. It takes humility to choose to put the kingdom of God first. It takes humility to choose to put the house of God first. Not our house. Not what we want. Amen. It takes humility. So when, I know you know the scripture, but I want you to think about it in the, in the, in the context of building a house of sacrifice. Because he gives you the ingredients right here. He gives you the foundation. He says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves. Not be humbled by me. God can humble. I mean, be humbled by God. <laughs> I'd rather humble myself. Just saying. Like... You know, when God gives you that look, you're like, right? You know, it's like that the mom look or the dad look. You're like, you're like, humble yourself. Don't, don't be hard headed and stiff necked and just, and continue until God humbles you. But the, the, the Bible says if they'll humble themselves, there, there's, there's something there, church. You have to choose humility. It's a choice not to be humbled, not for somebody to have to humble you and to bring you down because you're getting fat-headed. Anybody got a problem with fat Don't talk about my, it's just, it, this is physical. I'm talking about spiritual fat-headedness. You know what I'm talking about? Pride. Fatheads. I should have I labeled this quit being a fathead. <laughs> humble themselves. And then it says pray. Prayer is another, and I know that you may not look about it, but sometimes prayer is a sacrifice. I don't want to, I don't want to pray. I don't have time to pray. I don't, I could do this. The Lord's like, seek, seek, seek me. See, prayer is just you not depending on yourself. Prayer is you admitting that I need help and I'm going to depend on God. Come on, church. This is what prayer is about. I, I might be able to do it myself, but guess what? <laughs> I don't want to miss it. So I'm going to depend completely on God. Amen. So again, humility, 
It's a sacrifice. Prayer, dependence on God, sacrifice. Then he says, seek my face, which speaks of intimacy. And in order to be intimate, you need to be vulnerable. How many people, because you've been hurt so much in your past and wounded so much by people, you stop being vulnerable. You've got so many guards up, so many walls up, so many shields up. I was watching a show the other day and they had a shield that would like hide three of me. I was like, I want that shield. Right? <clears throat> right? Because there's so many people that have shields like that. Not shields of faith. But shields to protect themselves from being hurt again. And so they stop being intimate. They stop allowing themselves to be vulnerable. Because it, in order to be intimate, in order to be vulnerable, you have to lower yourself. You have to say, Lord, if it's your will that I get wounded again, I humble myself because... I want to remove all of me out of me and just get intimate with you regardless of how, how, what I have to face. And so many of us have become calloused and hard hearted and, 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 and God has can only enter into your house, uh, maybe to your foyer, maybe to your living room. He can't get to the bedroom. He can't get to the intimate most places. Why? Because you've got walls up. And you've put walls up. And in order to, in order to bring these walls down, you're going to have to humble yourself. You're going to have to seek his face. And when you seek his face, a place of vulnerability, because when you get that close to seek somebody's face, they can see all your... Have you ever get so close to somebody like... I didn't know you had that on your face. You know? <laughs> You're vulnerable right there. You're like right there. Like, if it's your, if it's your wife, then to start. Let me, no. It's, it's, it's a, a place of vulnerability. There ain't no hiding. There, there's no hiding no more. This is, you see in all of it right there, face to face. So when he says, seek my face, it's a place of intimacy, a place of vulnerability. It's a place of sacrifice. And then he says, turn from their wicked ways. That means repentance. And in order for you to even admit that you need to repent, you need to humble yourself. Because there's so many people that, I don't need to repent. I'm not offended. You sure? All right, you just bit my head off. Right? Or, you know what I'm talking about? Right? It, 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 so much pride and so much stiff neckness and so much turn from their wicked ways. I don't, I don't have any wicked ways. Are you sure? Right? Repentance is also another picture of sacrifice. It's a picture of dying to self. It's a picture of dying, sacrifice, altar. Y'all yo, yo, catch me? It's from this place, the Lord said. And I want to read it again. In verse 12, he says, I have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. This place. Let me, let me say to you this. I've chosen this, this position, a house of sacrifice. It's a sacrifice to oneself to be this way. It's a sacrifice to oneself to humble yourself, to pray, to seek his face, to turn from your wicked ways. It's, see, humble pride is the opposite of humility. And he says, humble yourself. And then he says, pray. Dependence on God is the opposite. You know, what the opposite is, is I'm independent. I'm self-reliant. You don't have to pray. You don't need anybody. I don't need anybody. Amen. You, you need to evaluate yourself. Seek my face. Some people won't seek and won't get intimate because their coldness, their aloofness, they stand off. It doesn't matter how close that they get. Relationship no longer matters. And then turn from their wicked ways. Stiff-necked. 
remorseless. Turn to, you don't have to turn there, I'm going to read it. Acts chapter 7 verse 51 says, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did. So do you. See, that is a picture of not wanting to repent. That's a picture of not wanting to change your life. And I know that this word is probably not popular in church today, but repentance is a must. When it comes to salvation, Peter said on that day when they were pricked in their heart and they figured out that they had sacrificed the Messiah. So men and brethren, what shall we do? Because it says they were pricked in their heart. He said, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. And then you shall receive a gift of the Holy Ghost. This is a promise unto you, all your children, and all those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God shall call. Repentance is a must. You can't just continue living on your life and living your lifestyle and just say, I'm going to make it to heaven because God is love. It's this place. A place of sacrifice, a place of repentance, a place of humility, a place of dependence on God, a place of intimacy, a place, a house of sacrifice is when, when the Lord hears. Amen. Amen. And that scripture that we all know, verse 14, it says, If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will then. It says then. When, 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 when does he hear from them? When they do these things. How, how many want the Lord to hear when you pray? Right? So here's, here's, here's a stipulation. The Lord, the Lord puts a stipulation on us. If you do this, I'll hear you. If you humble yourself. But they're wrong, Lord. Psh, that's not what I said. If you humble yourself. <laughs> right? But they're going to get away with it again. If you humble yourself. Then I will hear from heaven. And will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Hallelujah. It's then. If my humble. And then now I want to read uh, verse, verse 15. Because... We stop right there, but, but after the Lord hears them, he says, now my eyes will be open. I'm going to see you, and my ears will be attent unto your prayer. Where's that, where's that prayer? That is made where? In this place, in a house of sacrifice, in a house of humility, in a house of dependence on God, in a house of repentance. It's this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified the house. I've cleansed this house. That my name, watch this, how many, I, I hope this describes you. That my name be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. He's there continually. Amen. See... Let me, let me go into some other sacrifices just so we can address those things. You can sacrifice other things unto the Lord. You can. You can bring of your offering. You can bring of your tithe. You can bring of, of, of service, talents, gifts, whatever you want. to. You can bring these things. But, but what the Lord is asking for first is the, to build this house of sacrifice. At first, he's asking for humility. At first, he's asking for your intimacy. First, he's asking for you to pray for your dependency. First, he's asking for repentance. And then you can bring, let me prove it to you. Because the scripture says in Matthew 23, 24, right? And it says, it's from Matthew verse 5, verse 23 and 24. It says, um, uh, if you're at the altar... And you, you remember that you have something against your brother. Your brother has something against you. Then what you need to do is leave your gift at the altar. Come reconcile with your brother and then give the gift. He says, you can bring your sacrifice to me. But if you remember that something's off, I want you to go humble yourself. Don't, don't give me the, that gift yet. Don't offer that burnt offering. Don't offer that sacrifice. Don't bring me that gift. Go get that fixed first. Because this is more important than that. 
Amen? This is something that, that the church is missing. That, that we want uh, that person to apologize first. Right? And, and it's funny because people will take that scripture that I just quoted you and be like, well, why don't they come to their brother? They're, they know that I'm offended. Right? They know that I'm hurt. Why don't they come to me and say, hey, I want to reconcile with you. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. If you're the one in captivity over it, why don't you? Do y'all hear my heart, church? So many people want the other person to do it first. That's not humility. So many people want the other person to apologize first. Anybody in the house, in your own house like that? Don't point at them. You, you say you're sorry. I said it. I always say I'm sorry. You never say you're sorry. You know, you know that, that back and forth? Humility. I was wrong. You know, in my house, we were like, I was wrong. You were right. You're more smart. I'm a little dumber. You know, we just kind of, we kind of, we kind of just keep pressing it like that. I, I forget what movie we come, what it comes from, but we do like that. And, and it makes it comical. It's, it definitely stops a fight, an argument, but the apology is real. The humility is real. Amen. There's too many people that will take this scripture and it says, if you, if, if you have ought against your brother, then go to them and leave your, well, why, why aren't they coming to me? Why aren't they leaving their gift at the altar? Well, why aren't you? We, we, we put standards and rules on everyone else and we let ourselves get away with it. And God is calling us to humility, a, a house of sacrifice. And if you don't have a house of sacrifice right now, he said, you might need to work on that. You might need to build up to be sacrificial. You might need to build up to putting other people first. You not, might need to build up to taking the low road. Amen. Amen. Jesus came as the form of a servant. He went to wash Peter's feet. And Peter said, no, you're not going to wash my feet. He said, I'm, I'm trying to give you an example. This is how I come. This is how you're supposed to serve. He goes, well, he goes if you don't let me wash you, then... You have no part with me. He said, well, then wash all of me. There's so many pictures in the word of God about humility, about being low, about not trying to, to be the first. About humbling yourself. About having a house of sacrifice. Amen. Go to Psalm 51. The Lord took me to this psalm uh, Wednesday night in prayer. And I began to read it. And it ministered to me. But I want to point, I want to point something. This, this prayer that David is praying is an example of 2 Chronicles 2.14. If my people will humble themselves and pray. Here's what it says. It says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness. And according, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. So he's admitting, one, I've messed up. I've transgressed. I've sinned. I've come short. He says, Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. He's going to have to humble himself to admit all these things. Right? And cleanse me from my sin. For I, I acknowledge, here we go. I acknowledge my transgressions. I admit it. That's, how, that's humility. My sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest. And be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. He's even, he's even going lower. Even my mama gave me sin. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desirest the truth. Here we go. In the inward parts. And the hidden part shalt thou make me know wisdom. Go to verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit within me. Is that your heart's cry this morning? This is, this is a place where you're building a, a house of sacrifice. When your constant cry is, Lord, create in me a clean heart. And renew within me a right spirit. How many know when your spirit's off? <laughs> right? right. This, uh, 
or, or your spouse or somebody you know that cares about you, mom or dad, they just point out something wrong with your spirit. You know, you know what I'm talking about? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew within me a right spirit. Now go to verse 16. Let me prove to you that the that, 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 that sacrifice, you can bring all these sacrifices and you can want to, you know, there's a lot of people that want to give, but they don't want to change. They want to help, but they don't want to change their heart. They want to be used, but they don't want to change. They want to be, you know, they want to sacrifice in this way, but not in this way. Let me show you what the Lord says. Verse 16, it says, and David said, for thou desirest not in sacrifice, not sacrifice. What? Else would I give it. But thou desire, and thou delightest not in burnt offerings. Verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. So as much as you want to give and as much as you want to serve and as much as you want to do all these things, the Lord is requiring one thing of you first. And that's verse 17. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. That's a humble and a meek heart. That's what God will not despise. And then go to verse 18. It says, and do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion and build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then it says, then, after what? After the sacrifice of, of a broken spirit and a contrite heart, it says, Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of the righteous, with burnt offerings, with whole burnt offerings. Then they can offer bullocks upon thine altar. It's then. There's so many people want to put the cart before the horse. They want to sacrifice and all this to placate how they feel and what they've been. You know what I'm talking about? Let me, let me sacrifice it in this way because I feel bad. Instead of coming and saying, oh, and Lord, I come with a broken in a contrite spirit, I come humbly. I come with meekness. I drop my pride. I say I'm sorry. I repent. Then when you take care of that, when you take care of the house, a house of sacrifice, it's then now, then, that you can bring that sacrifice. It's then you can come to the altar with your gift. It's then that you can say, Lord, I've got these talents. Can I use them? Because you can be talented and, be, and, and, and used and it's tainted. And if you don't get that right first, that broken and contrite heart first, it's going to be with mixture. And I know that nobody in here wants a mixture. See, church, God is calling us this morning to build this house. A house of humility, a house of meekness, a house of prayer and dependence, a house of intimacy, and a house of repentance. A broken and contrite spirit. A house of sacrifice. Even James 4, 6. It states it. But God gives more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud. God resists the proud. But gives grace to the humble. How many need grace? Amen. And it says that God resists the proud church. And I can't, I can't put enough weight on that this morning that, that we need to drop our pride and humble ourselves. Because if you don't, you don't realize that God is resisting you. Because you're walking in pride. Because you will not humble yourself. Because you have a stiff neck. And God's saying, if you'll just break, you know, break yourself. Anyway, I'm going back to my hood. If you just break yourself. If you'll just humble yourself, if you'll just take a low position, a broken and a contrite spirit. Then he says, I'm going to show you, I'm going to give us grace to the humble. In Romans it says, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. See, so there's so many scripture and I could go scripture after scripture after scripture that's showing you that this is where God wants us to be. This is the house that God wants to be. Now, when I talk about humility and meekness, I'm not talking about weakness. There's a difference. You don't have to be weak to be meek. You can still walk in the strength of God. You can still walk in the boldness of God. You can still have the fire of God in you. But, but do you have a broken and a contrite spirit? Are you walking humbly? Are you being a servant or are you wanting to be served? 
Are you trying to lift up the name of Jesus or lift up your own name? Is it about you? Is it about him? Is it about his house first or is it about yours? God is calling us this, this morning church to build this house, to build that house. And whatever it takes, you know the rooms in your house that need construction. You know where it is that God is calling you to repentance and humility. You know where God wants you to, to make some transformation and a remodel. And God is calling us this morning to start building your house again. Because some of us have stopped building our house. Some of us have put the construction on time out. I'm just going to live in this part of the house. I don't want to go to that part of the house. It just reminds me of all my procrastination, my laziness, my frustration, my hatred, my bitterness, my anger. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't want to go there. It's still in the house. So you try not to go there, not to remind yourself, but it's still in the house. And the Lord's saying this morning, humble yourself. Just bring it before me. Don't keep it in the house. Get rid of it. Rebuild it. Rebuild that foundation. Rebuild those pillars. Rebuild that heart. Rebuild that mind. Rebuild that love. Rebuild that intimacy. Rebuild that prayer life. Rebuild all these different things because the house that you need to build, the house, the place that the Lord will answer, the house where, where the, the, the Lord will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing so much you can't receive it all, that house where He will heal your land and forgive you of your sin that's that house where that happens in a house of humility in a house of sacrifice amen come on church let's stand and let's pray father we come before you this morning and lord as you've reminded us this morning the condition of our house the condition of our foundation the condition of the temple of god lord we ask you to reveal to us, take any deception away, any self-deception or any of the enemy's deception and show me what it is, what my, the condition of my house, the condition of the house of the Lord, the condition of the temple that is in me for you to reside. Show me, Lord, what it is that I need to transform and change, whatever. And I say, yes, Lord, I, I come humbly and I repent and I will seek your face and I will pray, Father, and I will repent if you'll just simply show me everything. And I know you've already showed me some things, Lord, and I say, forgive me, Father. And I come humbly saying, I need you. So change me, God. I don't want to stay the same. The same way I came in here, I don't want to stay the same. I know that there's places that need construction in my life so that I can build a house, a real house that you can dwell in, a house of sacrifice that you can be honored in. Father, fill me with your spirit. Saturate us this morning, Lord God, in your presence. We ask you, Lord God, to forgive us of all of our sins. Every evil thought, Lord God, we've had evil thoughts. We've said evil things. We've spoken against people and slandered people, gossiped people. Father, we've given in to sin. We've had lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, and walked in the pride of life. We've been prideful, Lord God, and asked to forgive us. We wanted to be served and not serve. We put all these things before your throne. We've had idols in our life. And although we confess that you were at the top of our priority list, you really weren't. And we confess it to you now, Lord. We recognize our transgression. We recognize our need for you, Father. And we ask for forgiveness. Cleanse our soul with your precious blood. Wash us with the blood of Calvary. Cleanse us of all of our sins. Fill us with your spirit, Lord God. Create in me a clean heart and renew within me a right spirit. Thank you, Father.